What's up? How's it going everybody? So in this video today, we're going to be talking about training with the great Roy Dean. So we're going to be talking about it right now. Hey everyone, my name is Jason Hill. I'm a Jiu Jitsu black belt. I've been training for over 10 years. So if you like Jiu Jitsu, this is probably a good channel for you guys. I do technique videos, I do different sparring videos, I do some Jiu Jitsu talks. I kind of do all things Jiu Jitsu. So if you like Jiu Jitsu, this is a great place to be. Please hit the like and subscribe button down below. I appreciate you guys giving this video a view. So with that, we're gonna get into the video topic of today, training with Roy Dean. My last video, I talked about training with Marcella Garcia in the other seminar series. So I'll put that video above here and also in the um, description down below. Uh, also stay tuned to the end of this video because I'll be talking about who I'm gonna be doing next in the at the end of the video. So please stay tuned for that. But today we're gonna be talking about training with the great Roy Dean. So I actually met Roy Dean for the first time in LA. I was training at my buddy Henry Aiken's school in LA Dynamics at the time. I don't believe he's actually still training there anymore. I think he's in Vegas now. But when he was, I went out there to Henry's school to train with uh, Dan Camarillo. Dan Camarillo was teaching a seminar at Henry's school. So I went out there because I hadn't seen Henry in a while and I wanted to go to Dan Camarillo's seminar. And actually, Roy Dean was attending Dan Camarillo's seminar. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of fanboyed out. Um, Roy Dean, just specifically to me, was one of the first people I started seeing on the internet of teaching jujitsu on YouTube and putting what I would consider nicer quality of content out. <laughs> when I started training, there was either like DVDs or VHS tapes, or if people were putting stuff on the internet, it was like with a home movie camera. So the footage was very grainy. It wasn't very well produced. You couldn't really see <laughs> most of the techniques. So Roy Dean was kind of one of the first people I ran across that actually put high quality content out there. And he actually was one of the first people that I believe did kind of complete instructionals where it wasn't just only guard passing or, or, or uh, you know, guard attacks or submission escapes. He was doing a full like, here's what you need to know for blue belt. Here's what you need to know for purple belt. They were like kind of complete instructional courses of each belt, which I thought was really cool at the time. So we did Dan Camarillo's seminar and then we went out to eat after and um, I got to sit and talk with Roy a little bit more in extensive detail. And like I said, I kind of fanboyed out on him. I'm sure he was probably annoyed by that, but I wanted to pick his brain and, and I had some curious questions for myself. So we actually got to know each other. Um, th the dinner went really well. I, we got a, I got his phone number. And then I, when I came back to Oklahoma, I, exchanged, I uh, ex told my experience to my instructor, Ty, at Redline. And I said that he'd be a great person to have out in Oklahoma and he had, Roy had actually never been to Oklahoma, but funny enough, his sister lived in Oklahoma, but he had never been here, which I thought was super crazy. Anyway, that's more of his personal life. But, so he comes out, we bring him out to Oklahoma and uh, he has actually been out here two times to our school um, and both, both experiences have been fantastic. He is an amazing instructor. He, I know he competed and he did really well in competition um, when he competed when he was younger. Um, I don't believe he's like a 10 time world champion, but he did, he did very well. But he has definitely put a lot of time in developing his instruction, his thought about his techniques, and how he can blend them with multiple arts. He has an extensive also background in Aikido and Judo. He actually trained in Japan in both of those arts. When he was in high school, he lived in Japan. So he learned Aikido and Judo in Japan. So he has spent a lot of time trying to teach essentially Jiu Jitsu people how Judo and Aikido can be blended together, which I found very fascinating. He very much loves Aikido especially. And uh, I know right now he's on a big mission to kind of revitalize Aikido and make them more modern. Um, you know, he has his own tangent and spiel about what he thinks has happened to Aikido and how they're, you know, so unwilling to evolve and adapt. So um, if you want more of that information and, and his thoughts on that, make sure you check out his content because I think he has some 
of his thoughts about what he thinks about that, but he has made it kind of his mission that when he goes and teaches, he still wants to show that Aikido and Judo are applicable in jujitsu scenarios. So that was kind of my first time ever really learning in depth from someone who really knew Aikido and Judo on that level and mixing it with jujitsu. You know, I had learned certain techniques like wrist locks and throws just on my own from other jiu-jitsu people but never from someone who had been formally really trained in aikido to that extent like he had so it was really fascinating to see those arts blend i think because he has an extensive background in those his uh, fluidity in which he practices his techniques and even while he spars is very smooth um if you ever have watched an aikido or a judo demonstration there's no rigidness with it everything is very smooth you know in jiu-jitsu because we have a very large wrestling influence and you know other art influences we can be a little rough and forceful with certain things um, especially if it's from a wrestling or like a catch wrestling background but aikido and judo they don't do any force of techniques everything is very smooth and control based that was something that stood out very prominently whenever i watched him drill his techniques and demonstrate his techniques i actually did get the privilege of sparring with him and rolling around with him and um the first time I got to roll with him, I think we rolled two times. The first time we rolled, he was very nice to me, which I appreciated. Um, I was a fairly new brown belt. Um, and you know, I don't know, he's like a three or four stripe black belt. So he was very nice to me. He was letting me, you know, try some techniques out and move around a little bit. And, you know, then the second time that we got to spar, it was like, he was like, okay, I know what this guy has. And it just felt like everything was like one step ahead, which is how it should feel. But also it was like a different level of connection and smoothness that I had never really got to experience before. He was catching me in, like I said, some really weird uh, like holds and wrist locks from positions I had never knew that you could do in jiu-jitsu before. So it was very interesting to experience that kind of jiu-jitsu for the first time. Um, it was also very fun to roll with. There are some times I've rolled with upper belts. I've rolled with other three or four stripe black belts and it's not fun to roll with they don't make it a great experience whenever you get to train with them. They make it like a, a either a painful or demoralizing experience. And I don't necessarily think that they necessarily do it on purpose. It's just, that's just kind of how they, they train. I really enjoy training with people that I have fun with. So like with Roy, I remember our role was extremely enjoyable. Um, you know, I heard, the first person I ever heard say this was Hedon Gracie. Hedon always said that Every time that he rolls with a person, he wants them to walk away with the experience of, wow, that was amazing, and I want to roll with that person again. And that's how I felt with, with Roy Dean, that that role was so fun because of the positions that he was allowing and the ways that he was catching techniques and, and how he was giving me hints and tricks and tips. And it just didn't feel like we were trying to rip each other's head off. It was a fun and enjoyable role. So that's how I've always tried to even model myself as an instructor. Um, I pride myself as I feel like being a very good instructor and a detail-oriented instructor and understanding the rhyme and the reason, but also jujitsu has to be battle-tested and it has to be ready. So if you can't have your student have an enjoyable experience while they roll with you, then it's going to be very hard to build them up, which then I think you have failed as an instructor if you have not done that. I just remember that was one of the main things that stuck out in my mind of was how smooth it was and how enjoyable of an experience it was. So that was kind of the experience of training with him and getting to meet, meeting him. Um, the techniques that he showed in the sem seminar, like I said, were, were awesome. They were, they were very jujitsu oriented, but he blended multiple arts very well. So if you're ever in the area, um, I believe Roy Dean's in California. I think he's in the 27 Palms area. So kind of like the desert. And, or if he's near you and he does a seminar in your area, make sure you check him out. Um, you won't be disappointed. Also, he's got a bunch of online curriculum. Um, he's got several different uh, belt paths uh, techniques from white to blue belt, from blue to purple, purple to brown, brown to black. He's got all bunch of content out there. So make sure you check out his online content if you're in the area and you ever get a chance to train with him. I'd highly recommend training with Roy. It's a great experience overall. So yeah, with that, thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you like to hear some experiences that I've had out of the 10 years of me training. So let me know what you guys think. 
um, in the comments down below. If you've ever trained with Roy Dean, let me know what you thought about training with him. If he was a total a-hole to you and you didn't enjoy it, or if you had a very enjoyable experience, you know, please put it in the comments down below. I'm sure it's all great. Um, so with that, the next seminar series I'm going to be due is going to be the great Henry Aikens. Um, I've probably got to train with him. I've trained with him quite a bit. I would consider him almost like a, a second coach of with how much I've got to train with him and his influence from me, from my instructor to me. So um, Henry will be next. So make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below so you don't miss the next video that I put out of this seminar series. And uh, with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys. Take it easy.